So in this video, we're going to go ahead and just do a quick run through and apply each of our textures to this game object. Now we want to have three different materials, just like we did with our high poly object. So that way when we export this as an FBX, and put it into a game engine, it will actually recognize that this sword has three materials on it. That way, if you ever wanted to change the blade texture, you could just simply swap out for a different material and it won't change the material that's applied to the hilt or to the handle. It would only change just this one material that's applied to the blade. It will be three different materials as opposed to if we were to just assign one material to this, it would use one texture for the entire object and we'd have to alter just that one texture as opposed to just altering that one material. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just assign three different materials just like we did before. So the first thing I want to do is create the material. So I'm going to go over to our Hypershade editor. Go ahead and open that up and we're going to just go ahead and copy a few materials here and then and change some of the pathing on it. So we'll go ahead and start with our blade. So I'm going to select the blade. I'm going to hit Control plus D on the keyboard, and you'll know it'll duplicate that. And I'll hit Control A. And we're going to give this a name to identify it. So I'll say blade underscore gam. So I know that this is the texture for our game object. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a, an assignment. So I'll go ahead and select this box here, select files, and I want to grab our sword underscore D. This is our diffuse texture. And I also want to set up the normal map. So we'll go ahead and select the blade gam again and go to the bump mapping. Grab this. I want to select the file. And I want to set to use as a tangent space normal. Then go ahead and go to the file icon and set up the normal map path. So we'll go ahead and select that and go OK. So now our blade gam is set up, but we also need a hilt because that's our second texture. So we'll go ahead and select the hilt. I'm just going to hit Control plus. D on the keyboard. That's going to give us a hilt one. We'll go ahead and change this name to hilt gam. Press enter. I'll select it again. Now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to set up the color and the normal map. So I'll go ahead and go in, grab the file, select our sword underscore D, press open, and go back to the hilt gam again. Select the bump mapping, change this to a file, go to tangent space normals, and go ahead and grab our normal map again. Press open. So those two are set up. Now for the actual handle, I'm not going to grab this. This has an entire shader map applied to it, and I don't really want to deal with all that and go into the technicalities of it. So I'll just go ahead and create a brand new Lambert. So I'm just going to come over, select Lambert. It's going to give us this new Lambert texture, Lambert A. I'll change this to the handle underscore lowercase that. Handle underscore gam. This is our handle for our game object. I'll go ahead and find that. There it is, handle gam, and I'll go ahead and assign these same textures again. So sword underscore D. Then I'll go back to that texture again. So go ahead and find it. <laughs> we changed the name on it so it moved. Handle gam, and we'll go ahead and select the normal map for this. So go ahead and select file, go to use as tangent space normal, select this here, and we'll change the image name to sword underscore in. So now we have our three textures set up, and they each have the underscore gam set to them. So let's go ahead and apply them to the polygons like we did in a previous video. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to open up the four panel layout so I can get just the blade from the front view. Zoom out here and I'll mouse over the game object. Uh oh, I got to take it out of reference mode. So I'll take it out of reference mode. And then I will go ahead and right click, select faces, and I just want these faces here, just going down the blade. Then I can go back to the Hypershade Editor, find our blade underscore gam, right click on it and say assign material to selection. There's my blade. I'm going to do the same thing as you recall, it's easier to select something like a hilt if we just go into our UV map and use shell selection. So I'll go into our UV Editor, right click, select shell. And I want to go ahead and get every single one of these parts of our hilt. I'm going to select that. Then I can go back to our Hypershade window, find the hilt gam, just right click on it and say assign material to selection. And there we go. And we'll do the same thing to select this portion of the object as well, the handle. So I'll go back to the UV editor, select marquee, select everything for the handle, go back to our Hypershade window and go ahead and find our handle underscore gam right click and say assign material to selection and if you did everything right we should be set up so now when we export this object it will export with three different materials as opposed to a single material across the entire object the game engine will also recognize that this object can have three materials plugged into it it'll allow me to plug in a blade material 
it'll allow me to plug in a hilt material and a handle material. Let's take a look at that in action. So just sit back and take a look here. You don't have to follow along with this next part. Go ahead and save your scene though before moving on. But I'm going to go ahead and export this. I'm going to go ahead and file and I'm going to right click and go to object mode, select our sword object and go up to file. I'm going to select export selection. I'm going to go to my desktop here and I'm going to right click and just delete that folder. That was from a run through I did earlier. And then click new folder. I'm going to select export and press enter. Go ahead and double click this. And I'm just going to call this a sword. And I'm going to set it as an FBX. Now, if you are following along because you do have the Unreal Engine 4, make sure you have smoothing groups checked and tangent binormals checked. And go ahead and click export selection. Now, with that set up, I can go into the Unreal Editor. And again, you do not have to follow along with this part. This is just me showing you that it will recognize multiple materials on a single object. And I'll go ahead and click New Folder. And I'm going to call this the Sword, just for uniform's sake. And select Import to the Game. And I'll select our Sword.fbx that we just exported. And it already recognizes the static with normals and tangents. And I have the Materials and Import Textures box checked. And I'll go ahead and click Import. Now it's going to go ahead and build each of our materials and import our textures as well. Now you'll notice that because we use the same diffuse and same normal map, it only imported those textures once. But here it's created three different materials. So our sword is broken into three different materials. This is our sword object and it has three materials applied to it. And you can see them here. It's showing me that there is a hilt. There is a handle and there is a blade texture applied to this and I can change these to any texture I want and it will apply that texture to this object instead of the one that it currently has. Now the next thing we're going to be taking a look at is if I were to drop this into the Unreal Engine and I were to click play, you can see a problem here with this game object. Look at how big it is. It's almost as tall as our character. It's literally about one foot shorter than our character stands. So I definitely am going to need to adjust the size of this because I couldn't see the character picking this object up and swinging it around. <laughs> he doesn't look beefy enough for that. Maybe if I threw on some more muscles or turned him into a robot with Arnold Schwarzenegger looking Terminator muscles, he could do it, but I don't think so. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the scaling within the Unreal Engine 4 and how we can make adjustments to our sword, the pivot, as well as the scale of our object to match that of the Unreal Engine 4. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.